Okay, hey, good morning. Thank you and welcome. Uh, today we're going to review DockerCon 2016, which uh, just occurred in Seattle uh, last week, I believe June 19th to June 21. So thank you very much for dialing in. Uh, today presenting will be Kelly Beckman, who is a Senior Product Marketing Manager uh, here with NetApp. Um, what you're going to hear today is you're going to hear some trends uh, about the show. Is it growing? Is it not growing? Just some, some overdue data points. Uh, also, you know, what did you see about NetApp, what occurred at the show, any news that, that was brought to the table, and any other hot topics from the show. So before we get started, a couple housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, the lines will be muted. However, if you do have a question, feel free to use the chat feature on the lower left-hand corner. Uh, and we'll get to those probably at the end. Uh, today's What You Missed series uh, is part of additional uh, webinars that we have, including a, a Red Hat What You Missed uh, from that show coming up on July 14th. Cisco Live, we also have a What You Missed webinar, which will occur on July 21. And there's an, also a uh, VMworld What You Missed webinar, which will occur around September 6th. So look for those invites. We appreciate so much you dialing into this short 20, 25 minute webinar. Uh, just for participating, we will send you out a pair of uh, Solid Fire 3.0 socks. So look for those here in the next week or two to, to arrive on your doorstep. So thank you for, for putting in your address. And with that, I want to say thanks again for dialing in and we'll hand it over to Kelly. Okay, thank you. I'm Kelly Beckman. I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager here at NetApp Solid Fire. So the agenda today, I'm going to talk a little bit about DockerCon US, obviously that's why we're on this call. Uh, touch on the keynotes and what was announced, some trends that we saw, a quick note from NetApp Solid Fire. Then I'll go into a little bit on the NetApp Docker Volume plugin, the pub at NetApp, and then and wrap it up with some resources. So I'm Kelly Beckman. Uh, I've been in technology for about seven plus years now, but the last two years have really been focused on cloud and containers. This was my first DockerCon, so it was really exciting to see kind of what was happening around the world of containers. You can find me on Twitter at Kelly Beckman, and there is my email address as well. And that's me on the right in the middle of a big group of people celebrating the end of a successful show. So DockerCon US this year was in Seattle. It's a two-day show. The first night opens with a little bit of a reception, but then you really get into the meat of the show on Monday and Tuesday. Um, it's a very jam-packed show, so lots of sessions to go to, very high-valuable sessions, keynotes, expo hall that had a lot of vendors um, open for almost 12 hours each day. Um, DockerCon this year really is seeing exploding growth and just phenomenal adoption. Um, there were over 4,000 attendees at this show. It was sold out. There was a long waiting list. Um, to put it in perspective a little bit, DockerCon just two years ago had 500 attendees. So it's really grown in attendance since then. They had over 800 sessions submitted. Obviously, they didn't present 800 sessions, but they had a really full schedule. Um, Docker itself has 2,900 contributors because it's open source. And there are over 460,000 Dockerized apps out there, which they said represented a 3,000% growth in two years. So all of these statistics should really highlight that Docker and containers as a new way of application development and cloud enablement are really, really growing. It's, it's not a, oh, this might be interesting. I think this was the show that hit the tipping point where it really is interesting and we absolutely need to um, keep abreast of this growing technology. So the keynotes are split over two days. The first day is really all about product announcements. And they announced their 1.12 release candidate. Um, there's a blog on their website that I've linked here that can pro provide a little bit more information. But the big news in, in the 1.12 release, among many things, was they've updated Swarm to be more of a multi-host, multi-container orchestration made easy. So Swarm existed before. But it's a way to really stitch together multiple Docker engines and orchestrate them. Um, you can do this now through one command on each node to join those engines into a swarm. Previously, it was a 40 plus step workflow. So Docker's a big focus of theirs has been keeping things simple and making things simple um, to accelerate adoption. And, and making these improvements to swarm is a great example of that. 
Another thing they announced was that Docker's now there's now Docker for AWS and Azure, and it's now in beta. So again, you know whether you choose to run Docker on prem with your own infrastructure, or you'd like to run it within a cloud environment, they're they're making Docker widely available for a variety of different deployment models and methodologies. And then they had a few new experimental uh, features in 1.12, including a distributed application bundle, which is a new type of file format, and that blog really provides some great granular detail on all of the announcements. Then they announced that Docker for Mac and Windows had moved into public beta. Previously, it had been um, private beta. And again, there's a Mac Windows public beta blog post there where you can also have a link to go download this. So this allows you to run Docker very quickly and easily on your Mac or your Windows system um, instead of before, I, I believe you needed to go get their toolkit, and it was a little um, clunky to get that up and running. So this is streamlining, utilizing, and, and taking advantage of Docker. So I, I myself am going to go get the Mac version. So keynote day two is about demos of the things that they had announced on the first day. And then just a little bit more information on the ecosystem, and, and they brought up some customers and some technology vendors. But um, really, Docker is enabling critical transformations of companies looking to change the way they write their applications, change existing applications, and just deploy their infrastructure and ecosystem around an application-centric methodology. Um, the way forward really requires agility, portability, and control over applications. Um, breaking up monolithic applications into services or creating new applications out of services. Um, but what they really hit on was that cloud is not just for greenfield applications. You can move legacy applications into a cloud. On-prem is not just for legacy applications. You can do very microservices-oriented applications in an on-prem deployment. So there's no clear-cut way of where Docker fits. The answer is Docker fits a lot of places, but you need agility, portability, and control in those environments. They did announce the Docker Store, which is a marketplace for validated software tools and tools available in a Docker format. Um, so anyone who's created a validated software, or tooling, or messaging service, et cetera, now you can get those readily available. So again, this is really facilitating sharing of information and sharing of best practices and, and just tools that people are using across the Docker ecosystem to help grow that ecosystem. And they did highlight a couple of demos. They showcased using Docker Data Center with the new Swarm functionality. And then Microsoft got up to showcase how Azure Marketplace is now highlighting Docker Data Center. On day two, they also went over some trends that they've been seeing within Docker and Docker deployments. Um, three main things customers are looking at when considering Docker and deploying Docker. The first is moving to a cloud. So 80% of those that they had queried say Docker is central to their cloud strategy. Um, the next one is application modernization. Three out of the four top initiatives revolve around applications. Um, applications are very, very critical in, in driving um, many cloud deployments and moves toward a more containerized ecosystem. And then DevOps, 44% are looking to adopt DevOps. Um, you know, the, the show is evenly split, at least in the traffic we saw, between developers and some operations folks, but still it was a very developer-focused show. But all of them were considering, hey, I need to take these things back to my operations team to really you know, bring all of the pieces together, not just what I do in development, but what operations can do as well. And then 60% of Docker users are now running in production. So given the growth over two years, that's a lot of Docker users that have now moved into production. So they're moving out of that test and dev into running production applications. So a few words from SolidFire. Um, we are a high-performance storage system, very much designed for cloudy, uh, containerized-type workloads. Uh, we offer a scale-out infrastructure, so you can add one node at a time. We aren't controllers backed by um, big disk shelves. We're very nimble and agile for those cloudy environments and those applications that need more granular, predictable growth instead of three-year refresh cycles. You can automatically load balance all of the performance capacity across our system when you add in new nodes. So as application needs grow, 
um, everything is very seamless and transparent at the application layer. Our quality of service can be set on a volume level so that any application you're developing, be it test, be it QA, be it development, all the way to you know, staging and production, you can fine-grain control the performance that those volumes get across the application development lifecycle. So you can run test alongside production so that your production system, that your test system accurately mimics production. And we make this all available through complete automation. You can completely control SolidFire through APIs, which speeds up your ability to automate all of the tasks across it. And then we offer inline data reduction against all data coming in, and it's global, so across multiple volumes. If you have a development volume that's got duplicate data to a test volume next to it, that will be deduplicated, getting better system efficiencies. And this is all tied together through our NetApp Docker volume plugin in the Docker ecosystem. So a few of our updates that we touched on at the show was the NetApp Docker Volume plugin, which I'll get to in a slide. Um, we're a Docker ecosystem technology partner. NetApp is a formal partner in this program to really assist with integration work across the Docker ecosystem um, and just make buying solutions of Docker and NetApp storage much easier. Then we've also joined with Mesosphere and their open DCOS program to become a partner there at the orchestration layer in a containerized environment. So at the show, we announced full portfolio support of our enterprise storage offerings for the NetApp Docker volume plugin. This is cross-platform storage using a single plugin. So you can completely manage all Docker volumes, be it creation, mounting, unmounting, deleting them, through this Docker volume plugin up at the Docker engine level, it will call down to the storage, create volumes. If you've got volumes created on the storage, it'll call down and it will attach those volumes. Um, you don't need to create a dedicated data container, so to speak, or do any complicated shares. You can just use this volume plugin to manage the backend storage. Then we support composition of multiple storage platforms. The NDVP supports SolidFire. ONTAP and E-Series. And of those three product lines, you can choose the storage which meets your needs best. And you can run more than one copy of them simultaneously on any Docker host, each with a different configuration and, and pointed at a different back end. So maybe these containers over here need high performance block storage with quality of service. They're going to get pointed at SolidFire. You have some more file-based um, Docker container needs over here, those can get pointed at ONTAP. We've made it kind of one-stop shop for the Docker volume plugin needs. And then it's multi-protocol persistent storage for Docker. You know, most folks that I chatted with at the show have persistent storage. Not all containerized applications are stateless as much as folks would want them to be. So you can choose whether you deploy containers NAS or SAN, iSCSI, NFS, again, all through just one simplified plugin. We also formally launched the pub at NetApp, which is at netapp.github.io. This is our publishing hub for you know, code and blogs and videos, and it's very, very developer-focused. And you can go out and get the open source code that SolidFire and NetApp are creating. And some examples of content we have out there is, is very technical blogs around you know, volume options with the NetApp Docker volume plugin. We have a lot of open stack material out there as well. Anything that's open source at NetApp, this is now the one-stop shop to go get all of it, um, play with that code, read technical blogs, engage with the developer aspect of the backend storage. So some related resources to this show, um, the pub, again, netapp.github.io. We have some blogs on containers versus VMs, and then there's a link to the blog at the pub. And some upcoming events, next week is the Red Hat Summit, or this week is the Red Hat Summit, um, starts today, and it's in San Francisco. And then we have the Barcelona OpenStack Summit, which is in October. And then sprinkled over the summer and early fall are some OpenStack days and some meetups and places that you can find NetApp and NetApp SolidFire, um, really talking about how we can make persistent storage in a containerized ecosystem much easier to use. So that is all I have today. Thank you for joining. 
Okay, and with that, um, I don't see any questions in the chat room. Kelly, one quick question. Was this event in a hotel or was it in a conference room? It was in the Washington State Convention Center. So it was very large, um, very well attended meetings upstairs in the convention center. We had a big expo floor down below. Um, so certainly 4,000 people not going to fit in a hotel. Got it. And do you recommend people attend the show next year? Absolutely. Um, DockerCon continues to really be, uh, you know, what can you do in a Docker environment, but very much what are people doing in a Docker environment. So it's a great place to go and not only learn about how to deploy Docker containers and, and create that type of environment for yourself, but hear what other people are doing and, and share in their stories. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. With that, there I see no additional questions in the chat room. We thank you for your time. Look for your pair of socks. And we hope to see you at the Red Hat What You Missed on July 14th. Thanks so much.